you want to ask me, Luke? Um, oh, actually, yes. The now I guess you're getting into the real estate market as well, mm. and you're in the finance uh, market. Mm. So, if I go and buy a house, right? Can I use? Uh, I just keep hearing this. Can I use the equity I make from this house to refinance for another house? Yes. Can you explain you can. that? <laughs> can you explain? If you, if you buy a property for a mill, yeah, um, you've put you know two hundred grand down, and then the property value goes to one point two mil. Well, the loan is eight hundred thousand yeah. because it's twenty percent, so yeah. the eighty percent is the bank. Yeah, you've created an additional two hundred grand in value, equity. which means the equity position you have is now four hundred grand. Um, so there are scenarios where you can then pull out that two hundred grand if you refinance. A valuer will come in value the property come back at 1.2 million and then you go okay great go to your broker and you say can you uh extract some equity out of this property so that i can leverage it into the next investment uh and that's that's the way uh you know rich dad poor dad for example he, that's all he preaches yep. about it's about uh leveraging your equity in one property to put it into the next and the next so that you can keep expanding uh, and hopefully if they're positively geared you start creating more and more, more passive money. income, yeah. uh, and that's that's usually what happens in an upmarket. You know, people people uh, realize that something that they've bought just has all this equity, and they can then extract that value, put it into the next house, and it's a brilliant way to create wealth. And it's leveraged. That's the beautiful part about it. It's if the property price goes up one percent, really, it's actually going up five percent on your money because you've only put down twenty percent as yeah. a deposit. So everything is five x yeah. if it goes up. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? You, yeah, like, I know. You're, you're not actually putting a million dollars. That's you're only exactly putting right. Grand. You're putting 200 grand. Yeah. So on your money, it's going up 5x. Yeah. Um, and the other the other reason why I love property is it's an inflation hedge. So inflation, you know, a, a dollar, two dollars back in Vietnam days, you know, the Vietnam War um, was, could buy you a lot more than, than a dollar now. Yeah. Um, so... That happens constantly. Yeah. And in light of COVID, in light of, uh, you know, the printing of money, inflation is through the roof. Uh, inflation is through the roof across the whole world, especially in Australia. They just announced uh, the recent inflation numbers. I think it was like 6.3 to 7% yeah. uh, for the this, this first year's quarter. Um, that's a hole in, in uh, your pocket. If you've got money in the bank account, mm. that's literally saying your money is now valued at six to seven percent less, yeah. uh, because everything's gone more expensive. And and you'd know all about this, you know, with building, etc. All of the all of the costs of build have gone yeah. up. Um, Everything's and, going up except your money. So. Exactly, yeah. uh, and you're not getting a good return leaving it in the bank account. You're getting paid 025 percent saving interest rate, whatever it may be. They they should up them, but I, I don't know if they have. So the worst thing you can do and leave is leave the money in the bank account. What you want to be doing is deploying it in property because what you what you're seeing now actually in the real estate market, uh so COVID hit high, 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 high. COVID, you know, property peaked during COVID. Yeah. Uh, because everyone was just flush with cash and interest rates were at the lowest levels ever in, yeah. you know, I don't know how long, decades. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, inflation started rising and then the rates started rising and the rates really hurt the property price. But because inflation has continued, despite the interest rate rises, uh, property prices are now at least what media is reporting. And I wouldn't really take that at, at full value, but yeah. RP data releases a whole bunch of reports on yeah. what's happening to the property market. And it is, it is picking back up. Consumer confidence is increasing. Um, inflation ultimately affects uh, property prices positively. Because if the build cost goes up, well, then the property price, price has to go up, up yeah. right? So that's why I got into property. I had money. I knew I knew that the interest rates were low at the time. And um, I just wanted to move my money out of something that was losing money due to inflation and make an inflation hedge uh, through through property. Now, you could the argument could be made you could do the same thing with Bitcoin, right? That's what it is. It's an inflation hedge because there's a certain amount of coins yeah. uh, and they can't just print new coins. And that's ultimately what causes inflation. Um, but it's high risk. Yeah. It's volatile. Uh, and I don't want to risk my money. Uh, Warren Buffett's got three rules for, for uh, how, to, how to make money. 
first rule is don't lose money, don't lose money, don't lose money. You know, just don't lose money. Yeah. Uh, so real estate's the safest investment. Great. It's leveraged. It's a flat. It's a it's a hedge to inflation. That's why I did property. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much why everyone does property, isn't it? Yeah, like, exactly just right. The best place to be, in my opinion. And and there's also there's there's usually a question I get around property, which is like, oh, do I like should you be going for capital gains or uh, should you be going for cash flow? Um, do you have an answer for that in your scenario? What you want to do? Personally, I want to. You mean cash flow in terms of renting it out and getting, yield? Yeah. Or uh, capital gains, as in, well, you said you want to fix it up, so that's equity. Yeah. You want to actually create capital gains. Yeah, I do because the mortgage payments I can still pay, even if there's no one in there at the time, or I'm not leasing it out. I can pay them, and I wouldn't be looking to hold onto the property for years at a time. I'd look to flip in and out. Flip it in and out. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm I'm actually in the same boat as you. I have the same strategy. Um, I think you know. If I'm getting a bit of yield on property as mm. in cash flow, that's not going to affect my life. Yeah. Okay. There are people uh, where Just it definitely will. You know, a thousand dollars a month a month extra is a massive impact to them. Yeah. And if you can get it to two thousand, well, wow, game changer, yeah. right? Um, it take off. You know, just the cost of living here in Australia is yeah. massive. So I get that route. But for those that have cash flow, for those that um, can afford it. can afford it. Uh, I'd focus on building a war chest and the way to build that is through capital gains in and out flip, you know, create value like you exactly, you know, you're, you're thinking the right way, get it revalued and yeah. then, then pull out the money, leverage it again and put it into the next investment. Yeah. That's, that's the goal for me. Hopefully by the middle of this year, end of this year, have my first one. Good man. I, I remember, you know, when I was your age, I used to say that every year and it didn't happen for me yeah. to, till like 25, 26. So I hope it happens faster. Yeah, I hope, I hope it does as well. Cause I said that last year, I was like, and then I think at the start I was just scared. Like mm. when I was going to buy the apartment, like I went and told my mom and my dad, I was like, I've been telling my dad since the end of the start of last year, mm. I'm going to buy an apartment and I'm going to buy property at mm. the end of this year. He goes, yeah, show me. Cause he'd say I go out, I spend money. He's like, you're not going to buy a property um, spending the way you spend. And I was like, okay, I'm going to buy a property. Like, watch me. Watch <laughs> fuck you, me. Fuck you, dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I was like. I was like, yeah, watch me. I'm going to buy a property. <laughs> and then the end of last year, I was like, dad, I want you to come with me. I yeah. didn't tell him where. I was yeah. like, please come with me. He was like, all right. And I took him. I was like, okay, we're here. He's like, where are we? And he, he hated it. He needs to know where he's going. Yeah. I was like, oh. I want to buy that apartment. He looked at me. He's like, "Yeah, with what?" And I'm always telling him, "I got money. You got money." And for like a few months, I just didn't tell him when I was making all the loans. I mm. didn't even tell him I was loaning because he hates that stuff. Well, hopefully, he doesn't watch this podcast. Yeah, hopefully, bro. he's not watching this podcast. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I stopped now. <laughs> um, but uh, I was like, "Dad, I want to buy that apartment," and I was scared. Like, I was like, "Hold on, this is a lot of money. Like, it's sixty grand. It's not." little bit of money and that's what mm. i had at the time mm. and i was like i told you i was gonna buy an apartment like i'm buying i want to buy this apartment i want your opinion now and we spoke about it and whatever and he was like okay but where's like we were saying where's the equity you're gonna build what how how are you gonna build value on this property i was like oh okay i can't renovate this can i i can't make this apartment better than it is mm. i just have to lease it out and hope that the market continues to rise yeah, but you don't want to be doing that. Yeah, it's to, not. It's and not. That's what most people do, and that's how you get stuck. And that you're relying on just the market going yeah, up, finger, yeah. finger crossing. And right? then I, I was like, okay, well, this isn't what I actually want. Mm. Like, I said, I want to buy a property, but that's that's not the property I want to buy. And I, from then on, I'm just learning and learning and learning. I was like, okay, now this is what I want to do. Now I know what I want to do. Now, instead of sitting on my ass watching a Netflix movie at mm. night. I'm going to be on realestate.com. Like, I hate it. Like, I hate not being able to just watch a movie and I, and I still do. Don't no, get that's me wrong. Good, but, that's good. But that's good. Like, when I find it and when I'm flipping, I'm like, uh, I'll benefit now. If I can find something now, when I'm 25, 26, as you said, I'm going to have that head start over everyone. I'm mm. going to be able to live a lot easier when I'm that old, like, compared to what people do these days, you know? Mm. Warren Buffett says uh, investments is like baseball. Uh, except you don't get striked out. <laughs> so in baseball, That's good. you throw a ball and if you don't hit it three times in a row, Strike you're it. out, right? Yeah. 
But with business, you don't have to take a swing. You can just wait for the perfect ball. Yeah. Uh, and that's what real estate investment's like. That's investment of any kind. You can literally just keep waiting, keep looking on real estate and you'll start understanding the market more. You'll have your finger on the pulse. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.